Um, welcome to our planning committee now on the 1st of August, as we do carry on with planning all the way through the year. Um, some do think it goes into recess in August, but we certainly don't. Um, right, could everyone in the room please make sure that they've switched off their mobile phones, because it does interfere with some of the apparatus that we have here. So welcome all members and all there's an awful lot of public in, so welcome to you also. Um, right, I'm County Councillor Ruth Edwards, I chair the planning committee, and to my right... County Councillor Peter Clark and I'm the vice chairman. Philip Thomas, Development Services Manager. Mark Hand, Head of Planning, Housing and Place Shaping. Paula Harris, Democratic Services. Craig O'Connor, Development Management Area Manager. Thank you for your introductions and may I also remind members if they could kindly stay behind at the end of the meeting after it's closed so we have something to discuss with Welsh Water afterwards. So please uh, be prepared to stay after we've done the planning committee. Right. Apologies for absence, please. Thank you, Chair. We've received apologies this afternoon from County Councillor Jeremy Becker. Thank you, Paula. Declarations of interest, please. Councillor Brown? Uh, yes, could I uh, declare a personal and prejudicial interest in relation to the Hardwick Avenue application? Because I know a, a neighbour who lives next door to the where the application is. Right. Okay, Paula. Anyone else? Councillor Fekin? Uh, personal and prejudicial interest for 4C, in as much as I've seen it already and made judgment on it in Town Council. Right, thank you very much indeed. Right, we'll go, up. we'll go on now to confirm the minutes of the last, of the last planning committee. Page one. Councillor Brown, Brown, could you kindly turn your microphone off, please? Thank you. Page two. Page three, page four, page five, Oops. page six, page seven, page eight. Sorry, Councillor Brown. Yeah, on page um, seven, I just wanted to make uh, an amendment to the minutes if, um, in terms of accuracy. Um, because where it said that I proposed be minded to refuse the application, it said I did so on the grounds of uh, flooding. I actually did mention two policies there to refuse it on, on the grounds of D DES1 and policy uh, S12, but that hasn't been noted in the minutes. And s since I gave specific planning policies, I think it's important that it is noted in the minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want any clarity on that, no, anyone? Fine. Right, thank you. Right, page eight, page nine, and page ten. Move on, Madam Chairman. Do you have a seconder, Councillor Higginson? Councillor Murphy seconded that. Could I have a show of hands for approval for the minutes, please? Right, thank you. I'll sign those at the end of the meeting. Right, we go on now to the applications of the day. Um, this first one is in Chepstow, and this is application DC stroke 2015-01465. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Chair. Okay, this is a proposal at uh, 29 Hardwick Avenue. Um, the current application seeks demolition of the fire damaged dwelling, uh, which you can see behind the foliage there, um, uh, at 29 Hardwick Avenue, and its replacement with a new two-storey detached dwelling with access off, the, off that road there. The proposed dwelling would have a detached garage at the rear, and attached to the garage would be a one-bedroom annex, and the site is in the local conservation area. So I'll just run through the uh, actual drawings and uh, pictures so that's the next door that's number 31 you can see the fire damaged property on the left hand side there it's fronted by a stone wall and that's it behind a, a lot rather overgrown uh, site at the frontage there and then that's looking up the road you can see there's the terrace of traditional houses alongside it including number 27 which is on the end uh, and that's the site you can see it 
when we went there yesterday, we uh, observed how long the back garden is. It really is a really long, uh, quite uh, narrow plot, but uh, very long indeed. And then that's what the site looks like. Now you'll notice how projected forward the actual house is compared to the terrace alongside it. Uh, and then that's where the proposal is. So they would demolish the house and set, set the new house back so that it's set back uh, just behind the, the, uh, the, the terrace there, which is to the, to the north. And it would end uh, a little bit before the, uh, the actual uh, rear elevations of the existing properties. And you can see then that there'd be a driveway alongside it between the new property and number 27. And there'd be a parking area with generous parking provision at the back and uh, the garage, double garage, and the, the one-bedroom annex uh, at, the, at the rear of the, uh, the garage there, and still a considerable back garden as well alongside all of that. Uh, then that's the floor plan of the house, so it'll be uh, affected two and a half storeys. There'll be accommodation in the roof, including uh, one bedroom, and ensuite and study in the roof space. And then that's the elevation. So you can see it's slightly set down below because of the slope of the ground below the, uh, the terrace, including number 27 on the end. It's a little bit misleading, that picture, because it doesn't really, it's not representative of how long that driveway would be. And the annex, is, which is set right back behind it, looks as if it's a side, side, ele <laughs> side extension, but it's set right back further back than that. So uh, it's a bit misleading uh, in that the, the, uh, the garage would have a really long, generous driveway leading up to it. And you'll see that it's slightly higher than the new property, uh, than, the, uh, than the adjoining property at number 31 the there. Either, and then those are the rear and side elevations. And then that's the uh, garage at the back, which has an annex, on, uh, annex attached to it. So if I leave it on the street scene views. Uh, this is not very good. Do I do that? <coughs> do you know how you pause it? Um, <laughs> presentation up online. Okay, all right, just in case. For some reason, the IT uh, uh, says, says decided it's going to restart my computer in 15 minutes, which isn't very, uh, <laughs> isn't, isn't very convenient for, for showing a presentation, so bear with us. So we may have to switch the presentation to Mark's in, a, in, in 15 minutes. Um, anyway, in terms of the, the, the uh, merits of the proposal, um, initially, this application uh, related to the redevelopment of the site with four flats, uh, but following prolonged negotiation with officers, the scale of the proposal has been significantly reduced and the design revised comprehensively, and that this is the final result. The dwelling would be set further back into the site than the, the existing dwelling, as we've noted, and would be two and a half storeys with accommodation in the roof. And the roof would be half-hipped, and its ridge would be about 0.5 of a metre lower than the adjoining terrace property to the north, and about half a metre higher than the detached, uh, or sorry, it's, yeah, it's semi-detached property, number 31 to the south. The materials will be a mix of natural stone, particularly on the, that, that frontage there, uh, and red-brown brickwork with a slate roof. The proposal is considered to enhance the character and appearance of the conservation area. In respect of impact on neighbour amenity, there would be just landing windows, which are not habitable uh, windows, on the elevation facing number 27 to the north. And there would be no overlooking windows on the side elevation facing number 31 to the south. And the building's layout and scale is not considered to be overbearing in relation to the dwellings alongside or opposite the site. And the proposed garage annex, although close to the boundary with number 27, will be a single storey with a, with a hipped roof and set well back into the site, a minimum of 16 metres from the rear of number 27. <coughs> And in that respect, it's not considered to have an overbearing impact on number 29 or its garden. In terms of parking and access, which has been one of the main considerations in relation to neighbour neighbor concerns, at present the existing dwelling does not benefit from off-street parking, and neither do many other properties on Hardwick Avenue, which is a no-through road serving approximately 20 dwellings. The current proposal provides seven off-street parking spaces as well as a turning area to allow vehicles to enter and leave the site in a forward gear. The level of provision is in excess of what is required in our adopted parking standards, which require one space per bedroom up to a maximum of three spaces. By providing off-street parking where none exists is an improvement in highway terms. 
And as with many terrace streets, residents have to park on the road. Uh, and it is known that this may lead to some parking stress in the area. But by providing adequate off-street parking for the new dwelling, the parking stress in this area should not be made worse by this proposal. Local residents have suggested that providing a driveway with drop curbs for this property would result in one or two on-street parking spaces being lost. Although this is the case, this loss is more than compensated for by provision of parking within the site. And we all know that obviously the properties of the, of the existing burnt-out dwelling, if it was restored, would, would have to park on the road in any case because they have no parking provision at the moment. Uh, and local residents have also suggested that the driveway could be repositioned in the site, lower down the slope towards number 31's frontage, but there is no justification for doing this in highway terms. Overall, the parking provision in the area will be improved by this proposal, uh, it providing off-street parking in accordance with the adopted standards. Uh, and following the response from MCC Highways, the layout plan has been amended and a turning area is now provided within the site. So we would recommend approval of the application. Thank you very much, Phil. I do believe we have a couple of speakers on this actual application. Um, I believe the first one is from, Mom, uh, from Chepstow Town Council. Sorry? No, I think it's just the one objector. Just the one objector, Mr. is there? Lewis, yeah. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Please state your name and you have four minutes. Okay, thank you. Hello there, good afternoon. My name is Richard Lewis. I live at uh, number eight in Hardwick Avenue. Uh, many of the points I was going to discuss have already been just mentioned, but I'll read out, if I may, uh, uh, not objection, but what I would say, I'd like to make it clear that each of the residents I represent is pleased to see that this property has finally been developed because this can only be an improvement to the area. The current proposal is a big improvement on previous submissions. However, the residents of number six, eight, and number 10, and also a gross mountain Pendragon house, the latter two properties access for a driveway opposite number 29, each wish to offer their concern regarding the on-street vehicle parking situation, which has been mentioned. Uh, it will exist if the current development plan goes ahead. Detailed explanations have already been submitted on several occasions. Number six and number eight do not have the availability of any off-street parking, and so have to rely, they have no choice to park outside, on, outside their properties. For some years, non-residents continue to use the street for convenient, unauthorised free parking. As a result, often making it impossible for us residents to find anywhere within the street to park our own vehicles. As it stands, it's inevitable that this development will remove at least one, probably two, available parking places from the street. Also, any vehicle currently parking directly opposite the driveway access to Gross Mountain Pendragon House and the access to number 10 causes a potential access issue for those residents because the available turning circle into and out of those drives is reduced. It's believed that the current design for the development will only make this situation worse because of the position of the access driveway to the property would break up the flow of parked cars, potentially creating a more dangerous situation for entry and access to all affected residents, including those who reside at the new house as well, who would need to negotiate between cars parked in the street to enter and exit the property. This is obviously a serious safety issue that needs to be addressed. To alleviate these concerns, we have recommended for consideration to be given for the design of the plan to be reversed, so to have the property's access driveway on the right-hand side of the site when viewed from the front, in other words, a mirror image of the plot. This would ensure that remaining on-street parking would flow up the street in an uninterrupted fashion and alleviate the access issues mentioned. Number 27 has advised they are happy with the design as it is, and should the design be reversed, they would need to ask for maintenance access to be left at the side of their building, which falls directly onto number 29. Number 31 also would not like to have the plans reversed as their concerns regard vehicle access to 29 then being immediately adjacent to their property boundary. Number 27 also wishes to express concern about the proposed garage and annex building at the rear of the property, which they feel is too large, would be visually imposing, and could set a precedent for others to build in their garden in a conservation area. They've suggested if you feel the building is warranted, that may, may be made smaller with a lower flatter roof perhaps. I'm sure that suitable methods could be employed so as to minimise any effect on all residents should this consideration be a favourable one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Lewis. 
The applicant isn't here as a right of reply and they haven't opposed anybody, have they, Phil? No. No. Right. Um, who is the ward member for this one? Anybody? Not on the co committee. Your, is it your ward, Councillor Dovey? Yes. You're the adjoining ward. Yes. 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 Right. Well, uh, shall I call along for you to give your first opinion, please, and comments on this, as you are a member and, and a, in the adjoining ward? Thank you. Um, I'd like to say that my uh, comments are not, may not reflect what Chairs thinks about them, but okay. Um, I, I think uh, this is um, a, a development is, if you like, long overdue, due because... Uh, Could you put your microphone a bit nearer, please? Shall I go closer to it? Yes. Um, the, uh, this, uh, as a development, is, uh, is long overdue in... in in this area because it uh, has been um, a, a blot on the copy book of this uh, preservation, if you uh, like. And my views are that I think the uh, proposed development uh, broadly reflects the, whole, uh, the, the style of the houses in, in the area and uh, uh, it, it goes with it, if you will. Um, I think it will relieve the. It, I think it will relieve. I believed anyway. I, I've heard uh, the uh, comments of the gentleman across there, but I believed it would go some way to um, re remove some of the parking stresses in in that area. Um, and the fact that they are put in a, a garage in, in the back, which would take their vehicles away and remove them wishing to park on the side of the road like other people do at the moment, I think is, is a plus. Um, I think it will be a, a definite, definite um, improvement to the conservation area. I had some uh, reservations about the uh, garage, particularly what uh, the pitch of the roof and the height of it um, until I walked down the, ga uh, uh, the, the plot and saw how far behind the road it, and the building it was, so I don't see that it, uh, it impacts uh, adversely from the height of the pitch, but uh, uh, whether, it is, um, whether it is too big as a, as a garage I, I don't think I hold a, a view on that. It looks like a straightforward two-car garage to me. So all in all, I think it is going to be a great asset to the town. I think it will improve the conservation area. I think it's been thoughtfully and tastefully designed. And uh, broadly speaking, I'm uh, well in favour of it. Thank you, Councillor Dovey. Anybody else now wish to comment? Councillor Murphy, then Councillor Powell. <coughs> Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair. And um, I don't know whether uh, members have seen uh, Councillor Be uh, Becker's uh, comments in late correspondence, but he did uh, support the uh, application. Um, just a couple of things. Phil, can you go back to the uh, street, to the... Um, I can't, I'm afraid. No, you just got to... Uh, 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 I just, uh, Chair, I'm just trying to address some of the points made by the, the uh, uh, gentleman from number eight who, who spoke. Um, it's an interesting thought about uh, moving it over and putting the drive the uh, other side, and it will be interesting to hear what officers have got to say about that. But I wanted to have a look at the uh, other point that, that he made about this might be um, opening the uh, floodgates to uh, other developments in back gardens. And my recollection of the, uh, of the uh, layout of the properties, particularly the terrace properties, is that um, there was no other opportunity other than number 29 to build in the back garden anyway. Uh, but I wanted to have a, a, a look at that. Perhaps while Phil's doing that, uh, Mark, with, I, with you or perhaps uh, Craig, like to comment on uh, whether or not it uh, there, there is a problem with uh, reversing it, moving the, the property over, because um, 
parking is uh, is tight there, and um, there was a point about the the access opposite uh, that lane going up. Uh, if the drive was was there, uh, it would create more of a, a, a turning space um, that perhaps wouldn't be available otherwise. I think the only thing to moving it, if you move it, <laughs> it's going to be closer to number 27, isn't it? Really? Yeah, so, and, and, and it would be very tight against that wall. Because uh, at least with number 31, they've got their large detached garage mm. intervening mm. to the side of their property and this plot. If you move mm. it over alongside 31, uh, 27, Seven. it creates a tighter... Yeah, so uh, terrace, my terrace yeah, my thought would 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 be that just to give access or to have a gap between the two walls would prevent the driveway from going up the the, the other other side. I think I'm probably right there. So um, so yeah, uh, if you go to the um, the one where the uh, the site is edged in red, that one, yeah. So there's not really any opportunity in in that. Uh, in that street for anybody else to build in the back garden is there no so um i'm uh, i'm happy with um with uh councillor uh, becker's uh, uh, approval and i support the application thank you councillor murphy um can those people at the back can you hear well enough now you can right right Thank you. If everybody makes sure they speak very much into the microphone, please. I know people in, uh, do sit at the back very often have difficulty in l hearing what's being said. Councillor Powell, please. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, along this line of parking, um, the gentleman mentioned there's a lot of people come there and park that aren't actually residents. Well, we don't have to make provision for people to do that. And I think that we, if the two drives are coming nearly opposite, that's going to improve it because then there isn't going to be a car bang opposite the drive coming down. If, the, if there's uh, going to be a gap opposite, it'll make it easier to turn around. But uh, I, I can't see that it's going to take much more than one car anyway. But we can't make, pay, make a um, exception on planning just because some people come and park in a street that's not there where they're resident. I think that's you know, it was something that the police need to get on to, not, not us. Thank you. But I support the application. Thank you. That some things are beyond our control. Councillor Fekin, please. Uh, I'm in favour of the uh, of the application as well. And just looking at the um, diagram behind you now, there's provision or potential provision on that diagram showing maybe six vehicles parked. Um, so I think that sort of removes a fair few of the arguments against on-street parking. Um, but also to say, if we are minded to approve it, that we note that there is a large amount of Japanese knotweed in the garden, which needs to be put on as an informative. Thank you. Councillor Harris? Oh, sorry, Giles, I didn't see you. Agree between you who's going to speak first. Councillor yeah. Giles, I'll Howard, go next, thank then. You. We, we won't fight about it. Just a, a couple of quick questions. Um, first one, no response recorded in the report from the conservation officer, and I, I, I wondered, I'm surprised they didn't have a, a view either way. The, the second one, I have no problem with the design, and the fact that it, it is a bit, bit traditional with a gable at the front and the double bay is fine, but the only thing I, 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 I don't like about it is the roof looks ill-proportioned to accommodate the third, um, third level, and I wondered if there was any opportunity to try and draw that ridge down a little bit so it doesn't look quite so, so top-heavy. And the last point then, with, with the garage, and again, I don't have an issue with that, although it would be helpful, I think, if, if the roof pitch could be dropped. Um, I, I assume that would be, would be conditioned um, to, to be ancillary. But otherwise, in terms of the, the, the structure, I think PD rights would allow somebody to, to, to a fair bit of scope to, to build something like that in the garden anyway. So that isn't such an issue for me. Thank you, Councillor Howard. Councillor Harris now, please, and Councillor Higgins. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in the planning committee, we're constantly, before we actually get on to talking about the plans of any uh, buildings we're looking at, we're, we're, we're talking about parking. Now, we're vastly behind in the number of uh, houses that we need to build in uh, this authority, and it saddens me that we keep talking about we can't build because no, there's nobody uh, for residents to park. Nobody has the right to park outside their uh, uh, their house. And 
we need people to uh, uh, remember that. The important thing here is if the existing house was rebuilt as it is, then there would be a parking place outside the house that probably would be taken, assuming the neighbours hadn't taken it, by the, uh, uh, the resident uh, of the uh, existing property. There is huge amount of parking space off the road um, here, and uh, you know, seriously, I, I, I do worry that we get our priorities right. We're, we're here, we've got a desperate housing shortage, and we're concerned about off-street parking more than thinking about giving the go-ahead to a, a, a decent uh, development. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much indeed for those wise words, Councillor Harris. Councillor Higginson. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for me, the, the, the planning application as it is presented there is more suitable to, the, to that particular area than if it was to move the, the property, looking at it to the left. Because it, it, it is a slight gradient down that street, and uh, I think it would be, be hugely difficult to, you know, to... You know, to re re you know, realize how difficult it could be for the next door, the next door neighbours. Not if that if that uh, site was moved close to number twenty seven. For my part, I, it's, it's a definite improvement on the area. I mean that 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 property that is uh, is set has been is on that had been on fire at some point in time is a blight on the area. Uh, it, it it stands proud of the properties either side, which is number twenty seven and number thirty one, and this is a sensible development, and I'm prepared to propose we accept it. Thank you very much, Councillor Higginson. Anybody else wish to comment now? I believe it's been moved. Um, uh, by Councillor Murphy and seconded by Councillor Fekin. Oh, sorry, and also by Councillor Dovey. Anybody else wish to comment now, please? Could I have a show of hands for approval, please? Oh, sorry, you did uh, inquire. Uh, could you answer Councillor Giles Howard, please, Mark? Yes, any chair. In terms of um, the query about the uh, the roof. I think the scope for reducing the ridge would be uh, relatively slim, but I haven't actually looked at the a proper section through. Um, in terms of the actual height, though, we're happy because it does step down the hill in uh, in an appropriate way. And also the depth of the property. Um, again, we didn't look in great detail on the site because I wasn't looking at that point, but I'm pretty certain it's a lot deeper in footprint than number 27. Um, and you can see from the side elevation, although the roof from a flat drawing at the front looks really expansive um, when you're looking at the side elevation and the way it pitches away it's not looking uh, nearly quite so uh, so bulky in that sense so i think given the way which is going to pitch away from the streets it won't it won't look as uh, as stark as that top image shows um, so so we're we're content with that as it is um, in terms of uh, conservation comments um, in terms of resources, having to prioritise their work at the moment, but we have had a lot of dialogue in the office, and we're certainly satisfied um, this meets the test of preserving or enhancing the character or appearance of the conservation area. Um, we'd say it enhances, given the other uh, derelict property that's there now. Um, and you've heard, um, I think, everybody locally say they welcome that being uh, being resolved, notwithstanding one or two other comments they've got. Could you remind me on what um, the roof materials were, please, Mark? Sorry. It was slate, because I think by looking at that, it looks far more stark yeah. because of it being of a dark colouring on, on the actual uh, drawing there. So it, it looks more dominant, doesn't it, by yeah, the, right. the colouring? Right, thank you. So uh, I'll repeat now. I believe it was Councillor Dovey that first moved for approval, correct? Yeah. yeah. And Councillor Murphy seconded it. So um, could I have a show of hands for approval, please? Right, thank you. That looks unanimous, so uh, there's no objections and no abstentions. Please be patient, we do rely on the technology these days. We're back to Chapstow, Phil. Okay, right. 
Can we please go now to page 45? This is 00122, and this is at Luna Lane, Pennycombe Moor, Usk. Um, we put this up higher up the agenda because we have speakers on this item. Okay, Phil? Yeah, it's Craig. Oh, Craig. Right, thank you, Craig. Thank you, Chair. Um, Yes, DC 2017-00122. Um, this is an application at Dufferin Farm in Penna K. Moor Usk. Um, the application is a proposed conversion of the barn, which is pictured there on the presentation. Um, members went to site to look at this barn yesterday. Um, it is, th this proposal is to convert this building for a residential unit, for one proposed residential unit outlined in the proposed plans. As you can see there, it's within the farm unit, um, is access, existing agricultural access there to the site, and it's some Dutch bands and metal bands around the site as well. So that is the band itself, and that's the access lane which you gain access to it from the main road. Proposed location, that's the location of the site, that is a location plan showing exactly where it is in terms of different farm, and so in the, um, how it is within the farm instead of the building. Um, the property to the north is a residential unit, um, and that then is, is the farm in completion in the blue and the red line is the site. Yeah. That's the existing building. Um, as you can see there, it's quite a traditional pitch roof building, stone, brick and a metal roof. Um, it's approximately 39 metres squared internally. Um, and if you move to the next picture, this is what the application is proposing. So it's proposing one residential unit. Um, there you can see the layouts proposed on the ground floor, lounge, dining, kitchen, and a, a bedroom, which is a proposed extension on the site, um, which measures probably 3.4 metres by 4.5 metres. Um, that extension would be timber clad um, and have a slate roof to match the rest of the rest of the building. So if you go to propose, oh sorry, if you go back one, Phil, sorry. Yeah. If you look at the location plan there, that's the, the site plan actually shows the access and the parking. So there's two parking spaces at the side there. And part of that shed would also be given over for domestic storage, some at Dutch barn there. So that would be given over for domestic storage for the site. And it also outlines the, the private amenity space. That's quite handy. So let's go to the next slide. This is the actual elevations of the proposed building. Um, so it's going to be a stone building with timber. The extension on the back there is the, exten is the proposed extension, um, which would house the bedroom, and that would be timber clad then, um, with the main building being stone, timber clad, and a slate roof. So the application um, has been offered full consultation in terms of the local community. There was no objections from Lantris and Fire Community Councils. Um, there was generally no objection from statutory consultees in terms of highways, natural resources, Wales and biodiversity officer and the application proposes mitigation measures and the need for a licence for ecology um, and it's considered to meet the test in terms of ecology. Um, there was concerns raised by the planning policy officer um, it outlined in the report which outlines that there is um, concerns in relation to the size of the building and its acceptability. In terms of planning officer's recommendation on the application, the report fully outlines um, the evaluation of the proposed development and it goes through how we deal with the conversion of buildings in terms of policy H4, the local development plan. In the report, it goes through the criteria quite explicitly, going through every point outlining how the development is generally in accordance with the policy. The one area which is the area which has um, concern with the application and lies to its recommendation is the size of the existing building. The size of the existing building is considered to be too small to be a residential unit for this particular, pro um, for this particular building um, and that's where the concern lies. The internal footprint of the building is approximately 38 metres squared um, and this size of building isn't considered to be appropriate to be a permanent residential unit and um, the local plan planning officers feel that it would be more in tune for more temporary holiday let tourism use rather than a permanent residential unit. Um, so there is conflict there with criteria F of policy H4. Um, in all other respects, um, in terms of H4, the application is the design and the form of the proposed development and the 
even to the extent of the proposed extension, is considered to be acceptable. And we're, we're not considering um, the development to have any harm to the wider landscape or to the area. However, this application comes down to the, the principle of the development and the, the policy conflict with policy H4 in terms of the size of the existing building and whether it's appropriate to be a, a permanent residential unit. Therefore, given that conflict with policy, um, planning officers are recommended that the application is refused based on the inadequate size of the existing building to provide a, a permanent residential unit. Right, thank you, Clive. We have a member of the local community council who wishes to speak on the application. Okay, please state your name and you have four minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Good afternoon. I'm Glyn Williams, I'm a local farmer, not joining, but very close to the applicant, and I'm at the moment chairman of the local community council who had no disagreement with this application. Those of you who went to the property yesterday would see an old cow shed, a redundant shed not suited to modern farming. In my opinion, if something's not done to it to move on, it in time it will deteriorate more and will uh, probably fall down and will not enhance the beauty of the area. That's just the... Could you speak the, a bit louder, please, uh, Mr Williams? They can't hear at the back right. of the chamber. Thank you. The old cow shed, is that any better? The old cow shed, which many of you saw yesterday that went around in the planning, is a redundant farm building. And no matter what you do to it, it's not in keeping with today's modern farming. The only thing you can get in through the door is a barrow. And I don't know if many of you like it, but in farming nowadays, a barrow isn't very good uh, to do much. So something has to be done with it. It's either move it on and develop it or leave it fall down. And we don't want to fall down, so that won't enhance the beauty of the area. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis, the applicants, have lived there for many, many years. Son lives in Killian. Wife, as well, travels back and forth to help them when they need help on the farm. And I don't speak joy and can remind me saying their health is, is um, not perfect. But by allowing their development to live in this property, we'll then free up the bungalow for the uh, younger couple to live in, which in this day and age is probably more um, suitable. And the property will come into my opinion anyway. It's something, affordable housing. This thing that we hear so much about. It's not a big expensive house, it never will be. Oh, I don't think it will ever be or be anyway. It's affordable, maybe, maybe small, but we're all here, or I thought we're all here, to encourage affordable housing. Some might say, as the um, gentleman in front said, well, it's too small. Well, I'd like to take you back to something you have passed, not quite in my parish community area, but next door to me. Uh, it's just in, in uh, Newton Ward, I think it comes in. But it's 200 yards out of the our parish, where a barn smaller than this development has been developed and a husband and wife and child in it. Very good. It's a lovely development. I've got nothing against it. It's beautiful. But it is a little bit smaller than what this one is. So the question of size doesn't arise because you've passed things smaller. And this is only two people that are going to live in, Joy and Ken. They mightn't think so much of, of what I'm going to say next, perhaps. Mightn't keep them all that happy. But they, they do not want that much room. And as we get older in this world, 
we don't need a lot of room. So you can manage in smaller properties and it's happy and very happy to do so. If you give permission to develop this cow shed, the son and daughter can, as I said, live in the bungalow and they help. And the cost of all this is within, they are paying for it. Now, as we get older, we then have to rely on council help, home help and all the rest of it. And I'm no different than the rest of you. I'm getting on in age and we all need more help. Now, they are funding turning their little barn into something which will help. Help them, probably make it a lot cheaper for the whole community, council and everything else. And going back to that same old point, it's affordable, but it will suit two people. And it, they, are, they are very happy. And in time to come, because there's very... Um, little affordable housing in the air in the area and even if 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 this is not passed and they have to move to us and something in the future well then they have to find affordable uh, property in us now in a farming community which is the only thing i i know anything about is the fact that farmers do not like uh, going to live in a town and uh, i'm not been trying to be disrespectful to people that live in town but if you were born and bred all your life in the countryside you do not want to go into a town it'll break your heart it'll break mine anyway and I'll, I'll use mine as, a, as an example so in some ways by passing this you are falling into the line of affordable housing and in the last uh, idea if, it, if, it's, if you think it is wrong well, Could you please wind up now, please, Mr. Williams? Thank I you. I took four minutes. I didn't think I was going to take four minutes. There we are. I, unfortunately, in the, my notes and what I read, I believe in the, um, in the, the prospect of this. Uh, it's good. It's less cost to the county, and it will keep uh, a family very happy. And I don't think you've seen the size of the development, where it is, there is no thing in the future that somebody, because it's all things happening in the future, can build a very big house on that site. Which, as we all know, what we're trying to, or you're probably trying to stop, is someone doing a little one, building a bit more on, and then building a great one. Look at the site. There is no room to go around it to build anymore. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman, and thank you for allowing me to speak when uh, I hadn't given enough um, Notice before. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Williams. Um, there's several, I think, would wish to comment on this. Councillor Webb first, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Um, Craig, can you just tell me the difference in, a, in holiday accommodation and permanent residence? Because if I was going on holiday somewhere, I'd want the same situation, the same facilities as I would if I was going to live in this place. Can, is, there, is there any identification of the difference, please? Yes, with permanent residential, um, you would more likely have more domestic paraphernalia in terms of outbuildings and domestic storage sheds and development in general. And there'd be more pressure on you to, when your life adapts, to have increased pressures for extensions and development on that particular building. Whereas if you're going there for a holiday let and going away on a, on a holiday, you, you are literally just using it as temporary accommodation, um, not on a permanent residential basis in the long term. So there, is, there isn't that pressure then for extensions and for development and to, to further develop the site with new development in the open countryside. Thank you. Councillor Harris. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. <laughs> We're a planning committee, not a, um, a div uh, what's the right word I'm, uh, I'm looking at, not, not a benevolent uh, uh, committee. We have to look at things in, uh, in uh, planning terms and the, uh, uh, the gentleman up there gave a, a, a very nice exposition, exposition about uh, um, how uh, good and sensible this would be, but we need to look at it from the point of view of the papers that we've got uh, before us and what the uh, officers have uh, said. And uh, 
there's there's one bit in particular that um, uh, stands out uh, for me, um, and that is the use of uh, additional uh, space elsewhere. And obviously, to accommodate uh, this, there has to be part of a, a, a barn that is. Uh, uh, that is used, so that really should be taken into uh, uh, consideration on the uh, on the whole uh, application. <laughs> to my mind, 38 square meters is um, uh, extremely small. Have you got what the Welsh government's um, uh, actual uh, considerations are for a, a, a dwelling that is habitable rather than for use as a, a holiday let, please. Chair, yeah, there, um, sorry, there isn't actually a minimum size standard on a, on a dwelling normally. Um, the only standards we'd have would be for design quality uh, um, purposes for affordable dwellings, but they're, I was going to say generous. Um, you might think the market's too small. Um, but that's, that's the only actual figures we have. There is no kind of minimum figure sets um, in in Welsh national planning policy. Could I ask you, Mark, when you say 39 square metres or Craig, is that inclusive of the extension? No, the 39 was the existing building as it stands at the moment. The proposed comes up with 48 with the additional extension. In terms of the figure you were talking about, I did speak informally to our affordable housing officer, Shirley Wiggum, this morning about the, the, the sizes. And for a single dwelling, it's about 51 metres squared in terms of DQR design standards. So it still doesn't meet that requirement with the extension. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm not going to go and get into um, um, the, the, the emotional side of it. Definitely from straightforward building and planning. If you're going to Abergavenny and you've got Pluny Lane on the left-hand side, there are council flats. They're, they're council flats, and I've got a friend who's just moved to one, but she was living in one. And I can tell you this, her council flat was not as big as that. It's definitely no bigger, not as big as that. So how can, and she's got no other uh, shed outside, nowhere to keep anything. You've got to squeeze yourself into that house. Now that's being rented out by one of the housing associations. And for li long-term living, and then you have people who've got permanent caravans that they live in. How much bigger are these caravans than that? So I think that if the people are happy enough, if someone's happy enough to live in a house of that size, then I can't see a problem because you, you, you know, you've got what you need. Um, as I said, there's a lot of places that are very small. I've seen new houses, in fact. Um, I, Two years ago, when persimmon houses were opening, I went over as mayor to open it. And you go into it, and you think, this is a lovely place. And then you look around, and you think, well, where are they going to put anything? And those are very small, and those are family houses. And, you know, they, they, I can't see this argument of that being too small. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Powell. Many of the planning committee, we went to Newport, I believe, last year, to a very nice housing estate. And we went into a house there, very nice, very small furniture. There wasn't even a cupboard to put the vacuum cleaner in. And I dare say a lot of you remember that. It was very nice, but also very small. We're not talking of a family wanting to go in this. It is just one couple. And I've got a very small one in my ward. And I know we've got one just out Dingus, outside of Dingisto for an elderly couple that was very small. So it does hope to interpret interpretation. Um, I now have uh, Councillor Blakeburn next, please, and then Councillor Davis. Can you hear me all right? The light's not on, but it is on. Um, yes, uh, size is very subjective, isn't it, really? It's an interesting debate, this. I'm aware that in Chelsea there's a, a studio room, which is five metres by six, going for nearly a million. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a difficult one. Um, it would be too small for me, I guess. Um, if it was a housing association suggesting this size, I would be absolutely saying no way because there are basic standards and minimum standards. There's an element of choice here. If a house is made available for somebody to buy and they choose to buy it, 
then should we get in the way of that? So it's a, it's a difficult one, really. Thank you, Councillor Blakebury. Uh, Councillor Davis next, please. Then I have Councillor Murphy, then Councillor Brown, Councillor Giles Howard, then Councillor Dovey. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I've heard mentioned a couple of times that there's a precedent in other areas for buildings as small as this, so I'd like to ask the planning officers, is, is that correct? Is there a precedence within Mos Monmouthshire for a building developed as small as this one? There's no definitive, we haven't got a definitive number or, or what is too small in terms of the policy and policy H4, it just outlines that it needs to be adequate for living accommodation. With some of the, um, I know the gentleman mentioned there was another a site which I would happily look into. I, I know the chair did mention one to me yesterday um, in Dingerstone, which I did look at, that was bigger than what is proposed in, in this particular building. Um, without going through all the cases we've dealt with, I wouldn't be able to give you an exact figure, but it is each case on its merits, really. Um, I'm, I'm happy to look at any of those. There's, there's no set criteria for what is the small. No, perhaps I didn't explain it properly. I, the point I was making was that the people are saying that there has been buildings developed who are small, or as, as small are, or smaller than this one. Uh, and it, if that's the case, then we should you know, be aware of that, should we? Uh, Chair, do you want me to... Um <laughs> Now, if, Come you, back on that. if you mind, um, In terms of um, other barn conversions, one's been mentioned up the road, um, but we did have a, a quick discussion timing-wise, um, and that was under the previous plan. One of the things we did in the LDP was look at the policies, because we had some challenges in the past with things being converted that were of dubious nature for conversion. Um, hence, we're looking at them in this approach now. So there is a certainly a past permission for a barn conversion um, that we would say is too small and we would, if it came before us now under the current policy framework, we'd be recommending what we're recommending now. Um, but that one is is what it is. Um, there is another one that committee, um, previous committee members will recall, which is um, Bewley Barn site, um, where we ended up uh, as officers recommending refusal on a pretty substantial extension, um, but committee supported it because um, they felt they'd be unreasonable to say no. I, is my understanding what their thoughts were because the original barn that we'd allowed to be converted was so small so we're trying to avoid getting in that position again um, in terms of normal houses um, not barn conversions they're predominantly in town so the idea of buying a small persimmon house um, is is one thing I know the house that Councillor Powell might refers to um, it's actually 50 square meters so slightly bigger um, but we have got concerns about the size but that in a town setting they can just apply to extend if finances permits whereas our policy framework around barn conversions is we shouldn't be allowing significant extensions so we're, we're happy with this extension on here um, we're happy that's modest and and in keeping um, we're concerned that in future years someone else will want to live here um, and argue potentially successfully is too small and they need a bigger extension um, which is, is a scenario we're trying to avoid. Um, sorry, Craig, I don't know if you were going to add something different. I was going to mention Bewley Barn as well. This, this one. Right, okay, Councillor Davis, okay. Right, now uh, Councillor Murphy next, please. Then Councillor Brown, Councillor Howard, then Councillor Dovey in that order. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. And um, yeah, having had a good look at it uh, yesterday, um, I made some inquiries as to... Um, uh, the suitability of of it, um, I've got a great deal of sympathy from the uh, with the points of view that have been uh, put forward. Uh, but I looked at it from the point of view of whether or not um, there could be an agricultural tie on it. Um, the, it it's not really suitable for that. Uh, we looked at whether or not it could be a rural enterprise dwelling, uh, and that didn't work either. Um, I understand the argument for uh, a holiday let, but it's not... Um, is not required as a, as a holiday ad. So I come down to the um, position that I uh, had originally uh, uh, took over the over the size of the uh, the uh, property. Um, if it was if it was two story, um, then maybe the uh, the additional accommodation uh, uh, could be uh, uh, coped with. Um, but no, my uh, my reluctant. Uh, uh, conclusion is that uh, I won't be able to uh, support it because it is too small. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Brown, next, please. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, looking at it, it seems as if um, 
the refusal is based on policy um, H4, which I've looked at on the <coughs> LDP, and it just says um, adequate living accommodation, so it, it isn't actually that well defined. Um, but from my point of view is, is really I can see this particular property being linked to the bungalow in terms of uh, an ancillary application, which I would be far more happier happier at than um, standing on its own merits because it it's a nice you know it's quite an isolated property and it's a small small property as such and I think it fits more in within an ancillary application you know so that effectively if it was linked to the bungalow which is just round the corner and then was sort of in a sense linked in with the farm I would be far happier with the application and I, I do sympathize with the need to have accommodation nearby. I presume that the bungalow itself couldn't be extended in any way, but I don't know because we haven't looked at that because it isn't an ancillary. But I, I would be much happier with this being an ancillary and perhaps the kitchen facilities being um, or something shared within the bungalow. And I know that's not what's before us, and I appreciate that, but I would have more sympathy with an ancillary application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Giles Howard, next, please. Thank you, Chair. Firstly, a, a more technical question. Just looking at the, the footprint of the, the proposed um, bungalow with extension at the back, you know, it, it's an irregular footprint. And I'm looking then at the, the, the section and the elevations, I wonder how you could maintain a level ridge and ease a constant height uh, and, and yet cover a span that, that isn't, um, isn't rectangular. And I, uh, it doesn't look as though you could actually construct that. And also on the section, it shows the the extension at the back as being square onto the on, on, onto the existing structure. And I, that's just one small query. And I dare say it could could be overcome, but that the plans don't reflect that. Um, Louise has has raised the point I was I was going to in that we see, we see a lot about in, in the press about accommodating relatives within the existing curtilage of a of a house. It isn't perhaps too dissimilar, and you see ideas of like granny pods and that sort of thing, and with that kind of thing, I'd, I'd almost be ashamed to put a relative in something like that, because we're like having a, a servant at the bottom of the garden. This is completely different to that, but it's the same principle, and, and I agree with Louise that I'd find it more acceptable, having heard the speaker, if it could be conditioned to be um, and, and Siri. I'm not too concerned about the, the, the size of it, although it is small. It's not that much smaller, if at all, than some one-bedroom flats you see on the market. Um, and the other, or the last point then, the reason for refusal, I, I, I was surprised when I read the report, and I did think I was going to, to, to agree with it. Um, I expected the reason for refusal to be more on the grounds of the, uh, how possible it would be to, to convert the building without well, raising much of it to the ground, looking at the, at the, at the state of it. Um, so, then, but I saw the reason for refusal based on size. I, I thought, well, how sound is that? And have we previous previous examples of where that might have been tested in in, in a field judgment? Thank you, Councillor Howard. Councillor David Dovey, next, please. Got it. This stuff. Thank you. Um, I, I, could I just get something? Uh, uh, Alan raised a point about this precedent here um, already uh, being set to some degree. Uh, so we, we've ch we've changed. Are you say, uh, uh, saying that we have changed from what allowed us to um, uh, pass the um, the, pr the property that we're taking as a precedent here? Uh, have we defined what that should be, or is it uh, because I, I, you, you did say that uh, we've changed because we were unhappy about that, but have we put down defined um, uh, criteria, if you like, for that change, or is it just something that we aspire to change in, you know, or do we take each case as it comes up? on its merits. 
at the moment, it's every case on it based on its merits in terms of the policy H4. We are looking to uh, consult on a new supplementary planning guidance for policy H4, um, which will look at the policy in general, and we will be looking to potentially look at sizes in that document. All right, so at the moment, then, we are looking at this case on its merits. Um, the one thing that does go through my mind, if we decide to pass this, um, then we can put some uh, um, uh, limitations of what can be done on it in future. Uh, this is an elderly couple, let's be honest about it, and we're all getting older and the future gets shorter to, for us all. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, it's, <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to start happening to me. Uh, the, no, but the, the, the point of the matter, what I'm trying to say is that there might very well come a time when this couple, for whatever the reasons are, can't live in the house any longer, okay? Um, and it will become vacant, and then um, uh, perhaps the, uh, the owner of it, the son or daughter or next of kin or whatever, might wish to uh, sell it. But we could put limitations on what could be done to, for, to it on sale, could we not? We could certainly remove permitted development rights so that extensions can occur okay. without planning consent. Um, but any new application, that any extensions and alterations to the building then would need planning permission, which we'd have control of. But similarly with um, the one we just mentioned, there's a Bewley ban, it was considered that that was a small building, so then... Okay. Um, the planning committee did allow a large extension to that building. So, but we could control that the, if we provide a planning application at a later stage. Please bear with me. I've, I've tried to work my way through this to, in a logical way. So uh, the point came up just uh, now um, uh, some, uh, about two stories. Well, um, obviously two stories for an elderly couple like that. I had my mum and dad, so I know how it is. Two stories wouldn't be what they wanted anyway, so that wouldn't form a part of a reason for uh, refusing it. However, what they are trying to do is meet the, elder, their, the elderly needs, what they need to be able to live there reasonably comfortably with one another as long as possible. I would make that point with one another as long as possible. It's, it's, it's an important point as you get older. So what we should be worried about is whether the development, when it's put forward to us, meets the needs of this couple, because that's what we try and do with our affordable housing and that sort of thing. That's what we aspire to do. So whilst it's not suitable at the moment, there's no reason why plans couldn't be submitted for this dwelling that is suitable for an elderly couple which ma makes the uh, a building unique to an elderly couple's needs. There's no reason why that can't be done, as far as I can see from what's in front, for in front of us now. So why, why, why can't we do that? Chair, uh, if, um, if you're meaning as just a completely new build dwelling, we'd be looking at a new build dwelling in the countryside, which would be country to policy. Um, we have separate con separate policies in place for barn conversions because where it is a traditional building um, that we think is is worthy of being kept if it can be like this, um, we, that's what we try and support. So if you're thinking of a conversion in a different form by making it bigger, then we're looking at is the extension on this barn going beyond being modest and therefore changing the character of the barn. Um, so if yeah, so the option of knocking it down and starting again um, would be a no unless it's from a cultural worker, and there's all kinds of questions that raises, notwithstanding it as a farm, it's, it's a pretty small holding. Um, extending the barn in a bigger fashion, um, we'd have to look at the extent to that, and uh, if it causes harm, we think a bigger extension would be harmful. Committee might disagree, um, or you might conclude that as it stands at that size is fine. So we, we understand the applicant's intentions. Um, you know, We're not suggesting for a second they're in it for a quick buck, um, sell it on a move away it is their intention to move in it and we understand why they want to stay there um, but yeah thinking the next step on if for some reason they can't live there anymore we need to bear in mind what might happen um, 
you want me to just pick up on two other points quickly, yes. Chair, while I'm, while I'm on? Uh, um, could I just come back on one afterwards, Madam Chair? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, thanks, David. Um, Charles raised, uh, sorry, Councillor Howard raised a question about um, the structural stability of the barn. Um, from from our uh, assessment observations, we weren't concerned about that. We think it is capable of being converted, um, and those who were there on site, it certainly wasn't a comment I picked up on. Um, but if committee were minded to approve it, um, we'd want to remove um, rights to extend. We'd also want to put on um, a method statement in terms of the conversion to make sure um, it is done appropriately. Um, in terms of the other point that was raised about an annex, um, I can see the logic in what's, what's being suggested. As proposed, it isn't an annex building. It's entirely self-contained um, for obvious reasons. That's what's intended. I think uh, Councillor Brown suggested perhaps um, they could share the kitchen and the bungalow, but the bungalow is a good 30 metres away, um, which isn't... Um, isn't isn't great especially if somebody elderly to it's a long way to go for your dinner um so uh just in terms of that disconnect that doesn't quite work in our opinion um, but yeah i mean the, the the crux of it is do you think it's big enough um to live in or not um that's essentially what it comes down to Councillor dovey have you finished now no, I, I was I, I i just wanted to, to make the point that is as far as this is concerned, that we're only asking for it. To, it's, it's, a, it's a modest extension at the back, and it to be suitable for what this couple's needs are at the moment. And it seems that we have had precedent before to do something like this. It is not perhaps our favoured path at the moment, but it doesn't mean to say that we couldn't do it at the moment and make exception because it is... A, an exception for an elderly couple to live where they've always lived and uh, I, 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 have some, I have some sympathy and I haven't heard a compelling case at the moment as to why we, uh, we shouldn't be able to acco accommodate this making the right provisions within it so it can't be passed on in a later on in some other profit-making guise, which would be against the culture of what we're trying to achieve here, whether it be through uh, uh, county design buildings for the elderly and whatnot, or whether it's being privately done for the elderly. Do you see where I'm trying to get to with this? Right. Councillor Math thinking next, please, and then Councillor Ann Webb. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think we've got to bear this back to what we're here to. We're here to consider it on its merits. We're here to look at the, um, what's, what's been told to us by the applicant. We're here to look at the application. Um, Mark just pointed out that the crux of the matter is, is it big enough? We're talking two square metres. We've got to consider what we want to do with like, care in the community, how we want to look after our parents, how we want to look after our children. We want to think about how we're relating our relationships um, uh, intergenerationally. Um, this is a farming family who've been in the area for a very long period of time. If, if they don't move into this, if, we, if they don't spend the money, this is a, a considerable amount of money they're going to spend on a heritage asset. And, they, and if they don't spend the money, it's going to be lost, as was pointed out by the speaker. So we've we got, we got one, one hand, we're going to lose a heritage asset. In, in one extreme. The next step from that is you're going to lose an elderly couple who have farmed in the area for a long period of time, who have the ability to, if we, if we are minded, and, and it's within our gift, to, to give to them the ability to stay in the area, to stay on their farm, to be with their children, to look after their grandchildren, and vis-a-vis -vis have their grandchildren look after them. Moving forward, we do have the ability to remove permitted development rights. We also have the ability to remove or to restrict the curtilage, domestic curtilage. Um, so there are some, you know, it's, it's within our gift to, to make this happen. We have a policy, but it's not determined necessarily about two square meters. That's, that's within our, our mindset today, two square meters we're talking. The, the parameters typically, you can understand why this policy came into play, and the parameters typically would be to stop things like small outside toilets and that sort of stuff being developed. This isn't that case. This is a barn at the end of a farm, of a farm lane in a farmstead setting um, that's unlikely, un unlike other applications maybe. 
There's outside ancillary storage, which is going to be given over in the Dutch barn. Um, so my recommendation would be to approve this and to remove the, rest the, the permitted development rights um, and to also restrict the domestic curtilage, which me would mean any future application would come back before another committee. It would be up for them to decide. But then that would be eeping out into the open countryside. So that would be a different policy position again. So that would be a way of constricting this development without fear of um, of uh, a future unwielding um, 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 permit, uh, you know, uh, further development, which in my mind would be very unlikely given the location, given the setting uh, uh, of that particular barn. So my recommendation would be to approve this recommendation. From Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Feakin. Okay. Uh, Councillor Ann. At that point, it's not to approve the recommendation that says written, it's to approve the, uh, the application, sorry. Thank you, Councillor Fee. Can I understand what you're saying? Councillor Ann Webb and then Councillor Brown again. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm minded to second Councillor Feekin's proposal um, to accept, um, to approve the application. Um, I'm encouraged to see that I think it's well needed, this SPG on the sizes of development is well needed. It's been proved today, hasn't it? And I hope that that's coming forward quite soon. Um, basically, um, everything else I think has been said. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor uh, Webb. Councillor Louise Brown, next, please. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to um, ask again about the um, whether or not it's possible within to to add um, about this being ancillary to the main dwelling, because my concern is about a, a later sale of this at a uh, in the future, um, in view of the in view of the size of the dwelling and I do appreciate that there is a distance between the bungalow and um, this this particular dwelling but I would prefer them to be linked in if that's at all possible because of the fact that um, um, I think it would get over the problem of um, H4 about the comment about adequate living accommodation because obviously if it was ancillary to the bungalow then there wouldn't be a problem about the size of it in any event so I just want to know whether it's possible to consider that because you know it would be um, something that I, th I think would would help to make sure that this was tied into the into the main property and not um, because of the track down there I wouldn't like to see it sold later on as an independent property thank you thank you councillor brown my thinking was as an annex because there are annexes that are attached to the main house or whatever but they still live fairly independently but um, that isn't uh, what we're dealing with now and I can understand what you're saying if I was 90 years old I wouldn't be wanting to go and get my dinner somewhere up the road Councillor Harris and then Councillor Clark Thank you uh, Madam Chair um, what, Can I ask the, uh, the planning officers why, can it, it, why isn't it being considered as uh, uh, an annex? Chair, we've, we've looked at it as a self-contained dwelling, which is what they've applied for. Um, we can go back and ask the applicants if they will agree to it being an annex, but my view is it doesn't work well in that way because it's too distant um, that we saw on site. So I think in all honesty, my advice to committee would be um, there's two fairly clear recommendations, if you like. The officer recommendation to refuse um, or Councillor Feakin's motion um, to grant it with the conditions that he's set out. Um, if, it, if it were uh, minded to be approved by committee, it'd come back to the next meeting anyway to go through those conditions. Um, and we could also, well, I was say we could touch on then about affordable housing, but it's worth Craig just mentioning that so it's all in your minds. Um, but I think, I think it's more straightforward in actual fact just to go down either one of those two routes. Um, Craig, do you want to mention um, with Chair's agreement about the affordable housing now, just so it's all in members' minds? Yeah, so if... Um members were minded to approve the application and uh, it would be subject to affordable housing policy in which case the applicants would have to sign into a legal agreement to outline that it is for self-build only um, and they'd have to live there for a minimum of three years um, for their own occupation and if they didn't and they would sell the property on they would be subject to a financial contribution which in this instance is about £27,469 so if you were minded to approve that is something you need to take into consideration as well. And they would also have uh, no permitted development rights at all. They'd um, be withdrawn. Yeah, and we would certainly put on conditions in relation to permit, permitted development rights for the extensions and also for the outbuildings, as Councillor Fikin said as well. Thank you. Councillor Clark. 
Thank you, Chairman. I've been a county councillor for 29 years, and Mr. and Mrs. Lewis were there when I became a councillor first. And uh, obviously, I know them well, so I'm, I'm coming to it from a slightly biased position. But I've listened all afternoon to all of you speak, and it's become increasingly obvious that it comes down to what we dis decide is the right size. And if Mr. and Mrs. Lewis are happy to live there in, let's be honest, 50 square metres, 550 square feet, which is larger, as you say, than some properties we have to look at, then that should be what we look at. We surely shouldn't be p punishing them for, because they're two square metres short of what would be acceptable. At the moment, their son lives in rented accommodation in Killeen and has to drive in there each day to work with him on the farm. And obviously, the sooner that stops and the family is complete on one site, the better for everybody. And I thank uh, Councillor Feekins for his, his expression. You actually did it better than I could have done. And um, I, I hope that, you, that we will win the day this afternoon. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Councillor Dover, your microphone is still switched on. Well, just a council. Second, Councillor Feekins' motion. You've done it, have you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Could you I switch your... I have nothing more to say. Councillor Feekins said it a lot better than I could have said. No, I wanted you to switch your microphone off, please, I'll Councillor Dovey. I'll do that willingly. <laughs> right. Thank you. Now, you move for... You've moved it, Councillor Feekins, for approval. Sorry? And council by you. Yeah. And where you second it. Could I have a show of hands for approval then, please? Have you counted them? Right. Those, those for refusal? Okay, that's been carried. Oh, sorry, Councillor Harris? Yes, one refusal. Two refusals. Right, thank you, okay. Right, thank you very much indeed. We now go on to, oh dear, page, page 17 to 24. And this is again in Chepstow, 01556, Picton House, Lower Church Street, Chepstow. Thank you. Um, this is again one we looked at yesterday at the site visits. It was used as an office, uh, this neo Georgian building, to serve the former Osborne International Factory. Uh, and the factory was attached to the rear elevation of, of this uh, red brick building but obviously has been demolished now to make way for residential development, development some of which you see to the right hand side of it there, approved in 2011. Uh, it's located in the conservation area and it's been identified as a building that makes a positive contribution to the character and appearance of the conservation area. It's also within a C1 flood risk zone, that's a protect, protected flood zone. It's proposed to change the first floor of the building to a two bedroom I think it's actually a three-bedroom apartment, sorry, uh, and to restore the rear elevation of the building where the factory was previously attached. Um, on the basis of officer advice, the plans have been amended to provide a change of use to residential use to the first floor only, with the ground floor to remain as office use, which is a, a less vulnerable uh, use in terms of flood risk. The reuse of the building as office on the ground floor and as residential on the first floor would bring the building back into uh, beneficial use and enhance the character and appearance of the conservation area. In respect of flooding, um, NRW has objected to the application and submitted flood consequences assessment has not determined that the consequences of flooding can be managed. <coughs> NRW argue that it does not demonstrate there is a safe access or egress route from the site. And TAN 15, Techni Technical Advice Note 15 on flooding, advises that access routes should be shown to be operational under all conditions. However, the proposed, the proposed use would accord with policy SD3 of the adopted LDP, which allows upper floors of properties in flood risk areas to be converted to residential use, as a property on the first floor would not be at risk itself and would be well above any flood level. As regards the access egress from the property, the situation here would be no different to the approved housing site under construction at the Osborne International site to the rear, where the parking for this proposal will be located. 
and flood warnings would also be in place and the property could uh, be evacuated together with vehicles from the two parking spaces to the rear uh, that would serve the flat before any flood uh, flooding took place. The proposal is considered to accord with pol policy SD3 and to be acceptable uh, as a use uh, for this attractive building in the conservation area. And the immunity of nearby properties would not be harmed, so we would recommend approval. Thank you. Gosh. <laughs> you're, tr you're, tr you're trying to catch up on time? <laughs> Uh, whose ward is it? Councillor uh, Beckers, yeah. And so the, the adjoining ward member is usually uh, the next one that I call on. So I will counsel on Councillor Dovey first, please. Me to speak. It is a beautiful building. It's put in the first floor of this building to uh, excellent use. It will make a great home for people. There is no earthly reason why it should be uh, <coughs> refused, so I move approval. So, would you be moved and seconded by, or do you wish to comment, Councillor uh, Only to say, Chair, that uh, again in late correspondence, uh, Councillor Becker uh, gave his uh, support for the application, so I'm happy to second. Right, thank you. Could I have a show of hands for approval then, please? Thank you very much indeed. We now go to page 25 to 38, and that is 00936 Staunton Road, Monmouth. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, this application site is located um, to the east of Monmouth Town Centre. Um, people, who, members who were on site yesterday, um, it's just adjacent to the Lidl site and accessed off um, the mini roundabout on Staunton Road. Um, it's been if you look from the photographs there, if you want to click through, Phil, it's quite a dilapidated site um, and it has not been used significantly over the last few years. Um, it has got an existing use where it was previously used for uh, a builder's yard, storage facility, uh, vehicle workshop, etc. Um, so it has been has got a general industrial use at, at the present time, um, but hasn't been used for some, some years. There's also a house there that you can see in the picture. Um, which is also on the site, which isn't part of this planning application in this at this stage. Um, if you can go to the, that's the location in terms of where it lies in Monmouth. So it's, there's two acts, the two historical accesses to the site, um, one off Staunton Road um, to the north of the site, where Phil's pointing now. Is this an access there off the roundabout? And as members also remember on site, there's also historical access off Wysham Road, um, where there's a drop curb at present time. The planning application. Um, is to demolish the existing building. There's an existing stone pitch building on the site at the moment, which you've just seen in the photographs. So that's the existing structure. So that the application is to demolish that building and to replace it with a new modern building, which is fit for purpose, um, to accommodate a new industrial use um, for a signage store to create the signage and also to, for offices to generate the business for customers to come in and look at different options for what they want to do. And the proposed building itself is 11 metres by 25 metres. Um, it is a pitch roof building, 7.75 metres to the ridge. Um, as you can see there from the, from the plans, it's quite a modern building. So it is clad um, and it'd be clad, steel cladded uh, with external walls and profile sheet, steel sheets for the roofs with the openings being constructed with aluminium. So it's quite a, a modern contemporary design compared to some industrial um, buildings and office buildings. but um, it, it, as I said, it would we feel it is, it is appropriate in this in this setting. Um, the submitted plans. If you, if you look at the site plan, there, Phil is the next one. So on the plans, you can see that the proposed access points, the existing historical access points, are to be utilised as part of the development. Um, and there's also parking proposed to the sides, uh, to the south of the building, and to the side there as well. So considering the planning application within the report, you can see that um, the Monmouth Town Council did recommend refusal on the planning application, and that's the reason why it's been brought to the planning committee today, um, resulting in their concerns with issues with exiting the site from the southern entrance onto Mayhill, so that's the access there um, as part of the, of the Wysham site. 
Um, in terms of all other statutory consultees, there are no other concerns. Um, Natural Resources Wales have looked at the application, Tree Officer looked at the application, Environmental Health, and um, Council's Highway Officer has also looked at the planning application and has no substantive objections to the proposed access arrangements. In terms of the planning history of the site, it is, I think, worth mentioning at this stage, um, and it's been added to members as part of an appendix, an old appeal decision on the site. Um, this decision um, was based on, on a similar type of development of the site for industrial use, um, which was dismissed for flooding grounds. But it was, it was also, con the appeal was being considered in terms of access and also the flooding. But the planning inspector did conclude that the proposed access onto Wysham Road was acceptable and wouldn't have a harmful impact on highway safety. Um, so the, the inspector has already reviewed the access concerns of the site and does feel that the access is satisfactory. So that has been tested at appeal. In terms of this application, which is in front of you today, and um, the evaluation which is outlined in the report, um, the site does lie within a flood ground, so we have considered um, the, the flood implications of the site, and we have looked at technical advice note 15 in relation to flood in the Welsh guidance, and we do consider it meets the test. So that in terms of the test, it outlines that um, development needs to be to meet key employment op, um, objectives, which this would create employment in the area. It's also on previously developed land, so it has got historical industrial use on the site, so that is being used. And the consequences of flooding have also been considered as part of the application, so Natural Resources Wales have commented on the application and haven't objected to it on flooding grounds. They feel it's a less vulnerable development. Um, they've considered the, the, the flood levels at the 1 in 100 years, which is considered to be acceptable. The 1 in 1,000 years, there was um, some... It wasn't conclusive in terms of the flooding there, but on balance they feel it is acceptable given the type of use that is going to be proposed on the site. So in terms of flooding, um, th there is no objection from Natural Resources Wales, no objection from our planning officers. We feel it's in line with technical advice notes 15 and also our own local development policies. In terms of highway safety, as I've mentioned already, um, we do feel the existing access points are historical accesses. There's a drop curve on that road to Wysham. The proposal does outline that it tends to improve the visibility display by uh, moving the wall back slightly so it's directly in line with the drop curb so visibility will be improved in both directions and um, for the access point highways have as i said commented on the application they reviewed the proposals and they feel they have no substantive reason to refuse it given the existing and historical access points and as i've already said given the previous appeal planning officers do feel that it has been considered previously by the inspector and, and on balance therefore we feel it's acceptable in terms of the actual building and the visual impact of the proposal, as I've said, it's a contemporary design. Um, it's in line with other buildings in that area in terms of the, the being the big little to the side and also industrial units on the Mayhill Industrial Estate. Um, so we do feel that the, the proposed design is acceptable. It's a high level of materials, good standard, um, good contemporary design for that area. We don't feel it's going to have a harmful impact on the character and appearance of that area. In fact, it's going to enhance it. It would be added in terms of what's there at the moment. It's been dilapidated for many years, so to see something go on there would be highly beneficial to the area. In terms of residential amenity, it doesn't feel it would have a harmful impact on any other party, and there'd be no objections from any residents, local residents, for the site. Um, in terms of natural res um, resources, Wales, well, they've also looked at um, bat lines and fl fl flight paths in the area, and there would also be no harmful impact on any wildlife interests. So in conclusion, um, on balance, we've, we've reviewed the proposed development in terms of local development policies, and we feel that the, even though we, we appreciate Monmouth Town Council's concerns with the access, we feel this has been discussed at appeal, and there are historical access points there, and on balance, we feel the proposed development is acceptable, subject to the conditions outlined in the report. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Um, there is nobody on the planning committee for Monmouth Town Council uh, count area. So the nearest one, I think, would be Councillor Blakeborough, Councillor Webb, and then myself, maybe. So I call on Councillor Blakeborough first, please. It's just a question, really, um, because obviously um, the reason it's come to us is through uh, Town Council and their concern is the access and the exit from, from the site. Um, and it's not used that much now, but it is still being used. Do you know what the projected sort of uh, vehicle movements will be? 
they have been reviewed in terms of the planning applications of the transport system. I haven't got the exact figures to you now, but they have been reviewed by um, the highways officer and they are satisfied that the amount of traffic movement generated by the business is going to be significant and it's not going to have a significant impact on the area. And just the use of that building, um, are people coming and going all the time or is it just really for staff there? It wouldn't be a, a general... It'd be, it'd be open for the general public, but they'd be coming in on an appointment basis. So they'd be coming in, speaking to um, people about design and signage for shops. So it'd be quite appointment driven. So they, they haven't got a significant amount of park in there on the site, if you can see. So it's not going to be something, it's quite unique in, 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 in that sort of development. So it's not something that you could, a, a general public would go in, they'd be going there for the exact reason. I mean, for me, looking at the site, um, I mean, obviously it's going to add to Monmouthshire's economic growth, and that's a big plus. Um, it, it sounds as if the, the use of that building, uh, there will be an increase in traffic, but not, not, not massively. Well, I have pressed it on, guys, but I don't think it works. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I have no reason to refuse this based on what you're saying. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Anne Webb, please. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, it's going to be a huge improvement to this site. It's always looked very, very untidy at that particular point. The entrance to Monmouth, etc., etc., and also good employment um, going ahead. Um, I am a bit concerned about the traffic um, coming down Wysham Road. It's a, it's a huge amount. There's a lot of houses up there. Um, but bearing in mind what Craig has said, and, and enlarging the... Um, the uh, access by knocking down that wall, back to where the dropped curb is, each side of where the drop curb is, that would, yeah, that would be really good. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm quite happy with the application. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And my concern was that access on the, the May Hill Road. I know it's prehistoric. It's been through appeal and everything. Um, and when you say it, it's been there a very long time, but the trouble is today we've got such a, a great more abundance of traffic on the road. And school children do walk down that road. And that's what concerns me from Wysham down to the Comprehensive and the other schools. So it is that access that really does concern me, but as it's gone to appeal, and we can't do much about that now. Um, but yes, it's good to see that there will be employment there, and it's about time the site was looking a lot better than what it is at the moment. Um, Councillor Harris at the back now first, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to uh, approve this. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, the more traffic movements, the better, which will mean a lovely, successful business on this site. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Harris. You're sure they don't want to park anywhere? Thank you. Uh, anybody else wish to comment now? No. Uh, Councillor Webb, you wish to... Can I move approval? Yes, can. Do you have a second of Councillor Webb? Councillor Giles Howard, second to a show of hands for approval first, please. That's unanimous. Thank you all very much. Even if you do that, the lights are not coming on. Last application of the day, where we'll have to wait for the councillors to come back in before I start discussing it, is on page 39, it's 0035. Is Giles coming back in? Right. Thank you. 
Right, we now have a co full compliment now of our members on the planning committee. So okay, if Phil thank you. to do the last application. Yeah, so the last the application day. for today is uh, the application at Woodside Garage. It was deferred from April's meeting, if members recall, or some of you will recall at least. Um, and uh, it was to, to, uh, to liaise with highway colleagues to understand the safety issues regarding this proposed access. Uh, a few things have changed since then. Um, uh, I've just run through the picture, so that shows the site. Uh, that's the, actually the back of the units there, and it's where the steel fabrication site is. Uh, and that shows that the, there's no access around the back because uh, it's sealed off from the, um, from the uh, Morgan's yard. This is owned by a, another party. Um, and that actually shows the units in, in or the unit in Valdus Valley Joinery, which is, wants to gain access. And that's the parking area, which I'll come back to in a moment. Um, and that's showing the car, uh, the car wash on the right, and then the access back through onto the uh, onto the main road, then, which they want to open up and uh, formalise. Uh, so that's the proposal, and what they're proposing now is to put a hooped traffic barrier there to stop the uh, movements back alongside the petrol filling station, uh, making that awkward turn back to the left and up towards the bridge, and they just formalise a proper drop curb then uh, uh, between points A and B. Uh, and that's the original layout. Um, it says new curb, but uh, it was put in, as we saw yesterday, as, as a sort of pseudo drop curb. And the curbs got higher as you got towards the uh, this end of the end of the uh, of the petrol filling station to avoid people uh, crossing at that uh, further point. And that's the sort of hoop they'd hooped uh, barrier they would put in to prevent uh, vehicles moving back, back the way they have to come at the moment. And um, that's a plan that uh, uh, was sent through to us this morning, offering parking for local residents on the site uh, it's, it, uh, via agreement with, uh, with the local residents from the applicant to try and uh, accommodate uh, their concerns about lo loss of on-street parking on, along the main road. So that's, that's something that we would seek to condition uh, if members are minded to approve the application today. So we'd seek that they... Uh, provide those spaces uh, and make them available for, for residents in perpetuity. Um, so that's our uh, presentation uh, on that one. We would re continue to recommend approval. I always don't object to the access. Um, and uh, yeah, recommended approval. Right, thank you very much, Phil. A lot of the committee were there yesterday. The local member isn't here to speak today, so uh, the next one I think would be Councillor Clark, if you wish to speak, Councillor Clark. Yeah, can I congratulate the officers in having brought common sense to this by now having the provision for the locals to park? That was the whole problem, and we've now done it. The only thing that slightly concerns me, you just showed me a photograph of the bollard. Uh, wouldn't it be better if it was... Uh, we're a couple of those wobbly ballards. We've got them at the end of Usk Bridge. And it, you come around there one night, you've forgotten that it's there, and you're straight into it. I'm, I'm just a bit concerned. I wonder, you know, a couple of those upright wobbly that bounce backwards and forwards. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to be this particular well, structure that has to be the there? We, we wouldn't normally um, get them to put in those kind of safety bollards because this is in private domain rather than the public highway, which is probably where the other wobbly bollards are. Um, but we'd need a condition to require the installation of the bollards so we can ask them uh, for, for further details. Right. Councillor Feakin and Councillor Davis. I'd like to com commend the officers as well for um, negotiating the additional car parking, off-street car parking, which is a plus-plus and um, would therefore like to move to, to recommend. Thank you, Councillor Feakin. Councillor Davis? Thank you, Madam Chairman. The main concern has been dealt with as far as I'm concerned, and I would second Councillor Feakin's proposal that uh, we recommend that we accept it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to comment? No, it's been moved by Councillor Finkin and seconded by Councillor Davis. Could I have a show of hands for approval, please? Thank you very much. That's the end of the applications for today. I don't know if Mark or Phil wishes to comment on the uh, appeal decisions that we have received, or do you want to just have them noted? Um, it's worth it's worth just talking through the um, the photo on this particular one. 
Um, because when you're reading the report, it possibly doesn't uh, show quite what we're on about. Um, really briefly, this one was around um, some boundary enclosure and some planning conditions, um, which required um, retention of a hedge. Um, hedge was removed, a fence put up, and a laurel hedge put in. This is on a conservation area um, in Trelloc, I think I'm right in saying. Um, we, uh, we lost the appeal. Um, the inspector agreed um, or, or considered that the fence with the replacement different hedge were acceptable um, in the conservation area. So it will be better when the hedge is, um, hedge is grown. Um, but for, just for members' info and perhaps a separate conversation outside the meeting, it did result in me making a complaint to PINs about the way in which um, they come to their decision. Um, we don't think it was dealt with in a terribly good way. And I wasn't impressed with their complaint response either, but we'll talk about that separately. Thank you. I remember the application itself. Thank you, Mark. Anybody else? Would you have any more comments at all? Right. Um, we now have the presentation. Do you, Phil? Um, any idea how long this is likely to take? Oh, we'll tell you. No, about 20 minutes. I would have thought that's what I suggested. Right. And the public are well aware that uh, no, they're no, being allowed to sit please quietly at the back um, yeah so we will close the actual committee meeting as of now and it is about 20 to 4 and then we'll uh, reconvene now when unless anybody wants to have a break now before we need to start with the water <laughs>